Welcome back to the Omni Stage at Event Tech Live USA Canada 2021. And we cross over now to Seattle, I believe, for our next session, Create mm -hmm. an Event Technology Strategy that's hybrid proof. I'm delighted to say that joining Event Tech Live now is Ray Malcham. Ray, welcome to Event Tech Live. Hi, thank you for having me. Excited to it's be here. It's our absolute well, that's great. And, and it's an absolute pleasure to have you here, Ray. Um, I'm going to hand straight over to you to kick off your session. And I'll join you again a little bit later on with some questions. OK, thank you. Hi, everybody. I'm Ray Malcolm. And welcome to my session today. Hope you guys have had a great few days here at the conference. Uh, I'm going to be talking about creating an event technology that's hybrid proof. And looking forward to uh, walking you through that today. Um, just to start a little bit about me and who I am, uh, I'm Ray, I'm in Seattle. I'm an event technology consultant. So I've been in the event tech industry about uh, seven years. I spent uh, four years working uh, kind of on the client side. I worked on the event technology teams over at uh, Tableau Software and Cisco Systems. Um, I jumped over to work uh, for a tech platform for a while and was a project manager there. And then recently I have started freelancing. So as an event tech consultant, I work with primarily larger tech companies putting on their uh, corporate big events. And I help them come up with their strategy for technology to put their events on. So if it's uh, what platform is best for them, um, what data they need to collect, what integrations they need to be mindful of, uh, different um, vendors that they need to partner with. Uh, the cool thing is I get to be kind of agnostic to technology now and help clients find the best one that works for them, um, which is super fun for me uh, because there's so many out there that are great. I don't have to be tied to you know one platform um, to help people with. So that is a little bit about me. The last thing is before we dive in, I love using GIFs. Uh, my slides don't have a lot of text, um, so it'll mostly be you looking at me and hearing me talk, but uh, this uh, presentation is mostly themed around Schitt's Creek. So if you like Schitt's Creek, enjoy the GIFs. If you've never seen the show, just go ahead and ignore them or maybe uh, start watching it. So uh, what we'll be talking about today, uh, hybrid and technology. So we'll look at like everything is TBD right now, get a common definition, at least for this session, on what hybrid means, since I know it's a buzzword right now, just like pivot and virtual. Um, this is the new buzzword. Um, talk about questions to ask. That's where we'll spend the bulk of our time today. Um, and then kind of what it looks like to take those questions into a single event tech strategy. Um, before I jump in, there is a Q&A, and I will have some time to uh, go through uh, some questions at the end. So if there's any questions that you have, feel free to throw them in the chat and I'm happy to answer those when we're done. So everything is TBD right now. <laughs> um, I think it wouldn't be a shock um, for anyone to hear that no one really knows uh, what they're doing and has definitive plans for these in-person experiences coming up. Um, but we're all being asked to plan for it and discuss it and come up with strategies for it. So we know that they're coming, but that's about all we know. Um, it feels kind of like dipping your toe into like icy water, like no one's fully committing yet. Uh, it's, it's evolving constantly. There's new ideas coming in every day. I even have clients that their event dates are changing, which, you know, before this last few years, you didn't have events that changed their dates uh, the same year. Um, so everything's TBD. And I think that's so important as we go into strategizing and planning that, um, you know, all my milestone plans and timelines right now with my clients, everything around in person is TBD. Red date going live, TBD. How many people are coming, TBD. You know, where it'll even be is up for discussion. And these are for events in October and November. So um, there's still so much up in the air um, and it's hard to plan, but it is possible to plan with everything being TBD. Um, the next thing that's super important is that a hybrid event is two events. Um, and that's why I want to define that for this group going forward is that. Uh, you have two audiences, 
two different strategies, two different schedules. Uh, this does not equal one hybrid event. It really uh, equals two events. Um, and that is critical for us as we plan and strategize and staff is that uh, we're calling it a hybrid event, but we're really planning to. Um, I'd love to like know in the chat at some point if you agree with that or different perspectives you have. Um, this whole session, you know, this is my perspective based on who I've talked to, industry trends I'm seeing, my clients, but um, going into a planning cycle for these upcoming events where you're using the word hybrid, internally it's so important to discuss that this is two events you guys are planning. And so because you're planning two events and because everything is TBD, you have a lot of decisions that you have to make now. Um, and when I have decisions, I mean, uh, knowing that you're planning to events, knowing that things aren't def definite right now, there's gotta be some stuff that we have to make up front and some decisions here. And so some trends I'm seeing, some thoughts I would like to put into your head uh, is that uh, you have kind of two ways, I think, that you can approach being able to pull off a successful hybrid event, um, especially when it comes to technology. Um, you can look at divide and conquer. You know, you you can maybe have an in-person event and then bring it online. You can have the digital piece first and then have the in-person aspect later. Um, having a staff to pull off a hybrid two events is not easy um, and you will need more labor. Uh, I've seen events come recently where people are working 20 hours because they have to have a global support schedule. And uh, if you're not going to be able to pay to build your team up to accomplish this dual event experience, um, I think it's important to consider, at least consider what it would look like to space it out. Um, separate the dates for your digital event and your in-person event. Because as we just said, it is two events. They don't have to be on the same day. If that's not an option for you, then I cannot recommend enough to build your team. Um, build your team, approach it as you're planning to events, approach it that you need resources to pull off both. Um, build your team up so that you can do this well. Um, knowing that everything is TBD, these are some things you can decide early on while everything is TBD so that you're setting yourself up for success. So important decisions to make uh, up, up front. And uh, I think this is, will lead your team well to make some of these decisions early on as you plan your tech strategy. Um, so now we're on the same page. I wanna talk more about technology, but I wanted to align on what does hybrid mean? Uh, what uh, What's going on? What's TBD mean right now? And now we can look at technology. Um, my goal today is uh, to really help everyone think strategically with so many unknowns. And so I'm trying to equip all of you with questions that you guys can be asking early on in these categories so that you can have a hybrid, um, a tech strategy for hybrid. Because um, all of your events are so different and your strategies are all gonna vary one from another, but there's consistent questions that we can all be asking. And these are the questions that I ask my clients. So as an event technology consultant and strategist, this is what I ask my clients. Um, all the time now as we're starting to plan and they don't have answers for their in-person events. We're gonna talk about registration questions to ask um, and content experiences and then integrations. And most of your event planning and with technology will fall into at least one of these categories. Um, production um, is probably the one I've left off here, but I think it's related to content. So we'll hit on that a little bit too. Uh, so number one, registration. Um, questions that I would be asking right now as I'm trying to plan an event that will have digital and in-person experiences. Are we planning registration in a way that we can easily add ticket and attendee types? So because we may be adding in-person tickets later, we may be 
adding a uh, upgrade or new cost tickets later or different dates are we setting up registration now in a way that we can add those things later when we have the decisions? How can we launch registration for what we do know, maybe the digital event, knowing that we're gonna be adding in person later? What information is important to collect upfront for all users? Setting up that initial data you're collecting um, we all know there was just a session about asking too much for registration or not enough for registration. Um, this is so important, though, as you consider the data that you need for in-person people and digital audiences. Um, so what's that base level information that you would want from all of your attendee types? Um, and then are we setting up registration to really allow for a hybrid experience? And, you know, these two events, this in-person and this digital, uh, how do we do that? And so there's so many approaches and every platform's different, um, but really asking those questions upfront before you're too far gone is gonna help you be prepared from the very beginning with how to get those attendees in in a way um, that will be easy for them to navigate your event and get the content that they need. Those are some of the initial questions I ask for registration as I'm planning strategy. Uh, next content, super important. <laughs> uh, are you organizing and selecting content with these two audiences in mind? So uh, what we're learning so much this year, I think our biggest takeaway is you cannot translate an in-person event directly to a digital event. Um, People consume content differently, their attention span is different, their availability is different, um, people aren't as engaged from home typically, they're juggling a lot more, uh, their attention span is smaller. These sessions on virtual events now are 15 to 20, maybe 30 minutes tops, where in person people go to one hour to 90 minute sessions and they'd be fully present and fully engaged. So look at your sessions. Are you going to offer them to both? Are you going to ask speakers to prepare an on-demand session and an in-person session? Are you going to separate them out so that you have speakers for in-person, speakers for on-demand or virtual? Uh, will the attendees be able to easily filter the content relevant to them? What I mean by that is, are they only going to see the sessions that uh, they can go to. If they're in person, will they only see the in-person sessions? Do you want them to see the on-demand options? You know, how are they going to filter that content? Does your timeline support the type of content you want to offer? This is live stream, on-demand, um, simu-live, demos, workshops. Look at the type of content you want to offer to both audiences and make sure you build that into your timeline. This event right now, live streaming all over. And it was pretty surprising with how many events this year have been pre-recorded content. There's a lot of labor, a lot of time, and a lot of risk involved in offering live stream, which is great if you can do it, but make sure that you budget that into your timeline um, and that you're ready for that. And you think about the ways to do that for both audiences. And then do you have the budget to offer content simultaneously in a hybrid experience? So if you're really going to go for that live event in person and digital event at the same time, and you want that content to be interchangeable, ask those questions about budget up front because they are going to be impacted. Live streaming uh, has a lot of <laughs> implications. Uh, and so this will help guide that technology strategy as you start asking these, even if you don't have your hybrid decision yet on dates, on when, on where, you can still determine what type of content would we want to offer to these in-person attendees. Even if we don't know that much yet about the event that we're doing, we can make those decisions now based on what we have available, based on the timeline, based on the budget we have. Experiences, I had this as networking first. I shifted it to experiences to be a little bit more encompassing, but do you want these two groups of attendees to interact as one combined attendee group or to be seen as two different attendee groups? Uh, trying to connect the in-person and digital experience is a challenge that I
like everybody is making. Um, and it's tough. And so making that decision up front will allow you to put different uh, experiences in place that cater to both audiences. In what ways do you want attendees to find one another? So do you want them to network with the other digital attendees and then have the in-person attendees uh, interact with one another? Or do you want to provide ways, and you don't know how and you don't know what, but you want to provide ways for them to interact with one another um, as two different audiences? Can you look for experiences that offer activity for both groups of attendees? Um, so how can you create um, some cohesivity if you would like to combine them? Um, are you planning experiences that feel authentic to each audience? So uh, humans, people, we know if we're getting an experience that kind of wasn't designed for us. Um, I think that's pretty clear. Uh, so you want your experiences to feel authentic. Um, you don't want a digital per uh, attendee to feel like they're a side afterthought to an in-person experience and vice versa. Um, you want them to feel authentic to the ticket that they paid for or signed up for. And so as you're planning experiences and maybe you already have a bunch in, it's really just asking those questions. Would this translate to a digital or would this translate to in-person? Or how can we offer something comparable? Um, or maybe it's, are we okay with this experience only being available to our in-person attendees because it just wouldn't have the same effect as digital? And those are okay questions and those are okay decisions to make as long as you make them um, because those all have implications on your staffing, um, on your marketing, on your budget. Um, some experiences just don't translate well and you want them to feel authentic to the people who are experiencing them. And then lastly, integrations, which can be a scary word if you don't work in the tech side of the events, but it doesn't have to be scary. Um, knowing your source of truth for your attendees. So that's a big question I always ask. I rarely see clients use the same tool for every part of their event, from registration to content, to the front end platform, to badging, is where is that source of truth for your attendees, um, along with content? Uh, are you thinking about integrations every time you're adding additional elements to your event? So if you don't know that you're going to have in person yet or you don't know where it's going to be, you do know that if you decide to have an in-person element, that will add badge printing, that will add potentially a mobile app, that will add uh, scanning into sessions. Are you thinking about those integrations now with the rest of your tech vendors knowing that those might come or might not come later, depending on that decision. Um, keeping your partners updated on these changes is critical. Um, I definitely always ask, uh, is there any update? Even if there's no update on those in-person decisions, I'm asking every week in my calls with my clients, any update on in-person, any update, any decisions? What are people discussing right now? Um, I have a client thinking about regional watch parties across the uh, world for their digital event and having their EMEA, APAC, and um, uh, another region plan one day launch parties in specific cities. Okay, you know, how are we planning for that? How do we make sure partners are updated on that? Because that adds an entire new registration flow. Um, and it's okay if you don't have decisions, um, as long as you're constantly keeping your partners updated on changes that might come. And ultimately, who do you trust to manage this? Uh, with technology being so important this year for events, having a team, a person or a team to manage these integrations is so important for the success of your event. So getting someone in who you know will ask those questions, find those gaps um, that you trust are going to bring the right vendors together and talk to each other to accomplish what you want. So um, managing that and being able to set those expectations with your partners that, hey, I'd love to have all that information for you, but right now we just don't because we don't have any decisions, um, keeping them updated. So always ask, <laughs> I always ask uh, a vendor, if it's not me doing that part, who do you trust to manage integrations? Who's on point for this? Um, 
getting someone responsible for that is so critical in asking those questions because you will miss things um, if you don't have someone leading the charge on integration. So big takeaway with integrations is know your source of truth. Um, data can get messy, data can get stale. Adding multiple audiences now can make it even more difficult, but know where that data is and when it's reliable. Um, so those are like four simple areas. And the goal is, and I will email this presentation if you didn't get screenshots of all of those questions, I'm happy to share it. I just wanna share that knowledge is that you don't always have an event technology consultant or expert on your team. These are just the questions that I ask my clients all the time as we're kicking off. And I don't have a single client right now that knows 100% what in-person or hybrid option that they're offering even for the fall um, and then going into next year. So these are questions we're answering together even while we're figuring everything out. Uh, that's the kind of gist I want you to take away today um, just to feel more equipped to start strategizing and navigating. Um, and I always want to leave you with a few of a <laughs> little things. It's like, what would your event technologist say? Because everyone can put that hat on um, and shifting over. And so if you do have an event technologist on your team or you have access to one, trust them. Um, they are there to make sure you are successful, to make sure that you aren't missing anything, that gaps are being filled. Um, they do this all the time. Uh, they're working on events over and over and over again, and they are pulling from all of those events to see what are the best practices, what are the trends coming out, what were those really bad things that happened that they want you to avoid. Next, like TBD, that everything is TBD, it's okay. Uh, it feels weird and it's a little uncomfortable that we don't know what's happening uh, in the future, but it's okay. We can still plan our technology without all the answers. Um, and we can still figure it out and keep making progress. That's just the, the goal is not to stop Keep making progress with what you can and be aware of those things that are going to come up once decisions are made. And lastly, hybrid, like we're coming for you. We're gonna be fine. We're gonna make it work. Um, everyone's gonna try a bunch of different things just like they did this last year with virtual. Um, but I just can't emphasize enough that as you say, we're going hybrid. You know that you're planning two events uh, and you have two different audiences and that's going to impact your technology strategy through and through across everything. Uh, in the end, uh, so I'm Ray, <laughs> I was really quick, uh, but I just wanted to spend that time sharing that knowledge with you guys. Please connect with me if you would like. Um, and I, there are some questions coming in that I'll, I'll answer in a second. And uh, email me, um, find me on LinkedIn, um, or I have a website that you can reach out to me on, um, whether it's initial calls, if you're looking for event tech consulting or some guidance, um, I'm here and I, I love talking event tech strategy. So I hope this was helpful for all of you and I hope you feel more equipped to kind of plan your tech strategy as you're looking into this new hybrid event model uh, and gave you some guide, gave you all some things to think about. So thank you so much for your time and I think we'll look at uh, questions now. Okay. Uh, link that to people and keep content being pumped out that way. Um, yeah, and you know, streamline, as you said, that would probably be a last result for us. So, Rich, can you tell yeah. us about some of that? Very engaging, and it kept my attention the entire time. Um, but um, that was a live session. Um, I don't think I could make it through a 40 minute recorded session <laughs> and pay attention. <laughs> um, I have actually found when virtual started, it was like no more than 20 minutes for on demand. Um, I think in a way it can even be less than that. Um, if it's truly, you know, you'll know the subject and how in depth to go. Um, but the highest engagement, I think, is uh, for a recorded session, probably even like 15 minutes. Um, and maybe break that up if you have a longer session, maybe do a phase one and phase two. Um, think about ways you can divide that content up into more consumable chunks. 
Hey, Ray, thanks very much for that session. Right. Um, I've just dropped back in because there are some questions here. Just picking up on that last uh, point that you were making as well there. Um, I think we haven't quite yet realized how important it is to build in break time when we're expecting audiences to sit in front of screens for so long now. They're doing everything in front of a screen, a phone, a tablet, a laptop. They're working, they're being entertained, they're watching Netflix. And I think as event organizers, mm -hmm. we probably have a duty of care as well to factor in some downtime where we encourage them to actually step away. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that it's critical um, making people feel like they have time to step away and that they're not missing out, but they can come back. Um, I've seen some clients add in arcade games even just to play like a mind break. Um, we had a client that added in like Tetris and Snake. Um, they launched it day two during lunch and just gave people like, hey, go play arcade games or go do what whatever you need to do. Uh, you, yeah, that break is so important to keep them engaged and in the platform all, all event. Yeah, even some live music, you know, something like that, you know, mm -hmm. do something totally different that maybe has nothing to do with the content of your event, but just provide something that's there that maybe provides that bit of disengagement from that content. So when they re-engage, they're really, really switched on. Um, if I can come to a couple of questions, if I may, Ray. Um, first oh. of all, love the Shits Creek uh, gifts. Um, I, I'm okay. nearly at the end of I'm nearly at the end of season one, um, so I've got to pick it back oh, up once amazing. this is all wrapped up. I'm, I'm still early Good. days there. Um, first question: And um, what questions do you ask your clients when you're helping them to choose the right technology platform? This was something you mentioned right at the start of your session that you will consult with them. So, what processes mm -hmm. do you use to actually identify what may be right for a particular event? Right, right. Yeah, I think uh, I usually will ask about their event kind of portfolio. Do they have one flagship event? Do they have multiple field events? Is it important for them to use the same platform for all of those? Or do they want or open to piecemeal and separating it out? There's some platforms that really cater to large events and some that really cater to repeatable small field events. And then there's a few that are really flexible to offer a bunch across the board. Um, that's definitely a, a key question. The other one is a lot around uh, branding and flexibility. How important is it to the client to have complete autonomy on that front end experience from fonts to colors to the menu to icons? Um, every platform offers a different level of flexibility with customization. Um, some uh, questions I also ask are around self-service. Do you want to be able to learn the platform and do everything yourself? Do you want to pay the platform to do it for you? Or do you want to bring in a third party agency or production team to help get all of that set up for you? Um, those are kind of some of the key ones. And then just understanding their event uh, plan, whether it's several ticket types that they want to offer. Do they want to charge for the event? Um, what kind of content are they hoping to deliver? Is it a global audience that you want to offer content 24 hours or multiple time zones? Um, do you want people to see their info in their local time zone? So it's a lot about like what's that attendee experience and what are those priorities to them? And then how do they want to manage it on the back end? Sure. And sometimes it doesn't have to be complicated. I know that we've used Google Calendar, you know, loads for, for Event Tech Live. We found it to be a brilliant way of communicating out times because it adapts to people's local time zones very, very easily. You know, Google is, you know, pretty much there in terms of being accessible on any device now that can connect to the internet. So we found that actually the most reliable way is the one that everyone has access to. So why not use it? You know, just because it's it's free and just because it's Google doesn't mean that it can't be really, really useful to high-end events. Absolutely. Yeah, it, it's finding what works and not overcomplicating the parts that actually can be really simple because event technology is complicated enough. <laughs> <laughs> Um, on that note, something I just wanted to get your opinion on. So it's a, it's a, it's a thought mm -hmm. rather than a, a, a question. And it's from our own experiences here at putting together Event Tech Live. Something that you mentioned was integration with vendors, you know, and, and you can have events where 
You might want loads of different types of technology all working together, and they can do that. You know, we work with a lot of different technology providers, and they all integrate within our event platform. But one thing that we've realized is that by doing that, you have to have and maintain contact and dialogue with those technology providers during your event, which means then you have to think carefully about your team members and how you're actually going to communicate with those um, technology providers. Mm -hmm. We've got multiple Slack channels open. Mm -hmm. We've got WhatsApp groups. We've got emails. We've got all sorts of different ways that we're having to, you know, put messages backwards and forwards. And I think that's something that organizers really need to consider when they are looking at bringing in multiple vendors. I totally agree. I think the the communication plan is so important and also the support plan um, because most of your vendors that you're working with throughout the entire time that you're planning the event, uh, you might have one point of contact. Um, but for the actual event, which I just had an event, they did eight hours US followed by eight hours in APAC and then eight hours in EMEA. It was a 24 hour straight event. Well, all of these points of contact at each vendor, the production, the platform, the agency, uh, they can't be awake for 24 hours. And so I think it, it hit the team and the client pretty hard that week of the event where they really realized that even though they had like a contact person for overnight, there just wasn't that knowledge transfer that was going to set those people up really well to put on an event in EMEA, which was like without a flaw while that whole team that was supporting the US, you know, had to go to sleep after working for 18 hours. So the integrations and everyone talking to each other is so important, but really identifying a key and solid plan for that support across the entire group of vendors is critical and it can be costly, but it's like you could pay for the labor and plan for that, or you can pay later with upset attendees because they can't get a hold of someone or something's off. So that's really why I brought back to the idea of two events is that if you want to do this one event model where everything's trying to happen at once, you have to be prepared for how to support that um, without expecting people to be able to be awake for 24 hours straight. Technology strategy that's hybrid proof is what we've been discussing with Ray Malcham on the Omni stage at Event Tech Live USA Canada 2021. Ray is an event technology strategist based in Seattle. And Ray, it's been a pleasure to have you at Event Tech Live here today. Yeah. Thanks so much for your session and we hope to see you again soon. Thank you for having me. Bye.